Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 19 on EA Sports. We are just moments away from what should be an excellent matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Seattle Seahawks. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. It's standing by to call the action. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Century Link Field here in Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we, as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Los Angeles Chargers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at this Seahawks team as they get ready here. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And the way they played last week defensively, you look at the tape, it looks like they had extra guys on the field, and they thoroughly shut down that offense. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Chargers, things haven't gone exactly according to plan to this point, but boy, you and I down there with them before the game, they were fired up. And they understand how important this game is. Win this one, they can start to think about a turnaround. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback out of North Carolina State. It's Phillip Rivers. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here early. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. Now a play fake here on first down. And his first look is incomplete. The linebacker Bobby Wagner able to get back in coverage and knock it free. With that, let's check out how the Chargers line up on offense. Your NFL Comeback Player of the Year in 2017 was Keenan Allen, who set a Chargers record for most receptions in a season with 102. And he passed Hall of Famer LaDainian Tomlinson in doing so. Played only nine games in the previous two years. He plays with a ferocity that few see on the field, attacks routes downfield, and makes big plays. On second down, Rivers again. And that'll be incomplete. Tyrell Williams was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. Here's a starting 11 for Seattle, and they come in ranked 26 in the NFL against the pass. It's quite a unit, that's for sure. Number one in the NFL against the Pats. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top ten in the league against the Pats, but the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB, they'd easily move into the top five. Hey, 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 hey. On third down, Rivers is going to float this one. Deep rights and got his man complete. 20. 10, touchdown L.A. Tyrell Williams, his second touchdown on the season. And the Chargers have taken a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Now the extra point. The point after threw the raindrops up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken from the 7. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. They'll be led out by their enigmatic quarterback, the Heisman winner from Baylor. It's Robert Griffin III. 
And you and I both know that any win is a good win. And that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an interception. Pick. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. A first carry for the converted wideout, J.D. McKissick. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. He'll be brought down at the 43. Joey Bosa in on the stop. And here's the starting offensive unit for Seattle. And that means my eyes go to Doug Baldwin out on the perimeter. He plays the game so hard and with such passion, but also plays it skillfully. Only one drop last season on his way to another Pro Bowl season. On second down, here's Griffin. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. With that, let's take a look here at the Charger defense. Coming up with two straight Pro Bowls is Casey Hayward, who entered the league, and many saw him as strictly a nickel cornerback, but he could do everything. Play inside, play outside. Seven interceptions he had led the league in 2016. He had four more in 2017 with 22 passes broken up, which led the AFC. From the gun on third down, Griffin. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. And that's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So on fourth down, here's Marquette King to punt it away. Travis Benjamin, deep for the Chargers. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, they didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. A uh, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely, frees up your guys elsewhere. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. He's going to look for Allen now on the deep ball. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet. But I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. A good return there, 17 yards. Uh, the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It's Jaleel Adai who brings him down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Slow, slow, slow. Now Griffin on second down. 
staying on his feet. Now he'll escape to his left. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, he was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. An inaugural trip to the red zone here for the Seahawks. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. McKissick trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Nice play, Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Melvin Ingram. Coming hard that time. He's able to run him down for a loss of 12. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Well, they'll get 15, but that won't be nearly enough. It's fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. A second down throw for Rivers. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. On third down, Rivers, he's got Allen. Allen hit, he lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And the return will stop right around the 25. So a first quarter fumble in the rain, and this isn't supposed to let up. They've had flash flood warnings just west of here, so they better get used to this. And it's hard to do real early in the game because you're so amped up and you're trying to do so much. He's got to get used to it, though. You've got to focus in on the ball, make sure you're taking care of it. That one cost him. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. 7-3 the score. We'll be back to Seattle right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They'll need to convert a third and seven, though, to start things out. Out of 
the gun. Griffin. And this is going to be incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. And Janikowski bangs it through. And they'll get it back within a point at 7 to 6. So they recovered the fumble, but ultimately could not take advantage of the short field. Definitely a lost opportunity right there. I mean, they were in prime position to put six on the board. Ended up settling for three. So we're back to a one-point game now as the kickoff comes. Now Austin Eckler on the return. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Now, yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Second down, Rivers. Hunter Henry brings it in. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A nice little completion there by Phillip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday, fifth grade. Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations, so he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. Gordon loses the football. It's loose. And the Seahawks have recovered. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of slow, see slow, ball, slow. get ball. Slow, slow, slow. Z, 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 Z. On second down, Griffin. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando. Four. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Joey Bosa coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, 
you're really almost discrediting their work. Here now, a look at Melvin Gordon. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. And he fires one that's intercepted. He's picked off just shy of midfield, and they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. All right, let's go ahead and just add it up here. The last three drives, two fumbles and an interception. Somewhere, to paraphrase one of the great coaches of the NFL, they're asking on that sideline, what the heck is going on? And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Joey Bosa in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to CenturyLink Field after this. All right, coming up at intermission, Charles, you want to wait to enhance your Saturday? I certainly do. Uh, I've got just a thing for you. It's the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by Orlando. He'll be alongside and have to take us through the weekend in the NFL. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Griffin. And the grand made by Doug Baldwin. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Griffin on first down. Some strong running at the 20. It's caught. Lock it. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Throw, throw, throw. Throw, throw, throw. They'll run it now out of the gun. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Looking to throw on second down. Griffin is complete to lock it. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get up. There's Baldwin. Touchdown, Seattle. Doug Baldwin with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Seahawks are able to strike for six. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Money looking forward. Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Sebastian Janikowski on for the PAT. Janikowski adds the extra point, and that'll make this a six-point game. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. Kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken in at the one. 
And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Phillip Rivers now gears up to lead the offense on the field. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far, he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Rivers on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Throwing again. Rivers on second and ten. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Gordon. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Rivers now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Rivers. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. Throwing again, Rivers. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And this one is right through. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, all right, Brandon, thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll begin down in the Big Easy, the L.A. Rams in town to face New Orleans. And it's the Saints who have the lead in the second quarter. Two touchdown passes there for the venerable one, Drew Brees. From there, let's head to the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado. Check in on the Broncos. And they've got the lead over the visiting Houston Texans. Emmanuel Sanders, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get to Silicon Valley. Check on the 49ers at home at Levi Stadium. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Raiders. Jimmy Garoppolo leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken from the seven. Oh, fighting off the defender. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Players spotlight time now. Robert Griffin III. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well. But the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. On first and 10, it's Griffin. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes 
you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now Griffin firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. on first down, escaping the pressure right. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse, still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Hey, four down, four down. Ready, three, nine, three. On first down, Griffin. It's caught out right by Graham. tight end position it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL yeah you're getting really terrific athletes a lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point they continue to give you speed great hands and big bodies which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks they'll try and run for it on first and goal and now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage no gain on the play that time but it sets up second and goal now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. To throw on second down, Griffin. Buying time to his left. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Melvin Ingram in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. And that's his second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Janikowski bangs it through, and that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Brandon, but with six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use, just right. something to get you off to a quick start. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Rivers now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. 
We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center-eligible stuff, but still, a lot of guys to account for. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It was Jaron Reed who got him down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Ready. Now a second down throw for Rivers. And this complete to Henry over the middle. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Catch number 40 for him on the year. It's a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. But a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. First down, Rivers. And right side, Henry's got it. And he'll be brought down at the 27 yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing Rivers. And this will be incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. They go play action. Rivers. And it's complete. Henry. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Ready. Throw Ready. one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude. But I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Good. Good run, Good. Again, it's Rivers. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack second goal last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football had to eat it and ended up on the ground so it's third and long for the chargers and rivers after the sack now rivers gonna give it off to gordon and they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. They lost two, and it brings up fourth. 
An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. And his kick is indeed good. And the lead is back down to three here at 16-13. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. A little less than four minutes remaining. And the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. And remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Joey Bosa in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. On second down, here's Griffin. Benjamin with it over the middle. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the play. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They'll throw on first down with Griffin. He's going to rifle one deep left. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Now a first carry for LeGarrette Blount. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. Griffin going to throw it. Boy, stays up. Forced out to his left. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. They certainly thought they had him surrounded and probably thought they were going to get him on the ground and get the sack, but he was able to elude that. And even though it threw it incomplete downfield, if you're a defensive back, you're loving the pressure that you're seeing from your front. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now RG3. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And now the Chargers are going to signal for another timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This from 54 yards away. That's running out of steam and it won't get there. He left it just short, no good, and this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and 10. This is Gordon on the dump off. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 
It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. Hey, hot. Hey, hot. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. He's got his man. It's Williams. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a charger first. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. They'll look to throw. Throw right side, complete to Williams. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Ten more there and another first down. He'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball. They've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Back to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. He was unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to tie things up in the final minute. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. Now we knew this had the potential to be a tight game, but with less than three minutes to play, couldn't be any tighter. We're all tied. All locked up, right? And this next drive is going to tell us everything we need to know about this game because I want to see how they come out with the football. Are they going to be aggressive and attack downfield? You still got the two-minute warning to come up? Or are they going to be conservative and try and hold on and maybe just get to overtime? The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up in the top. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. The Seahawks on third down. They're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. This is third and 16. Throwing now is Griffin. And that is incomplete. Two huge plays there down the stretch. The sack on second down. Now they force the incompletion. That's going to lead to a do or die fourth down. And they look like they've got the confidence right now that no matter what gets thrown against them, but whatever play gets run, they have the ability to shut it down. They are just brimming with it right now. Now Benjamin. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. 
They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and ten. Rivers to throw. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. He'll get a couple yards on that one. And it'll make it second down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost himself some yardage there. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here a hundred times. Nothing good is going to happen. If you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Incomplete. Both players were there offensively and defensively, but it falls incomplete. The Chargers go here. It's Rivers. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And this is going to be intercepted. Tedrick Thompson picks it. And what an effort on the final play of regulation. All zeros on the clock, and we are headed to OT. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Williams now on the return. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. And careless with a football there on the kick return. And one thing I love about going to practices is trying to get around coaches and hear their catchphrases and what they really emphasize. We haven't been to a single one yet this year where a guy fielding a kick, you don't hear, tuck it away, tuck it away. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing pound. I just want you to pay for my meal later. And you really just wanted four quarters, what you wanted. But how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So for the Seahawks, the win here means it'll be a 7-1 first half of the season. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Los Angeles Rams. Meanwhile, for our visitors, they fall two games under 500 now at 3-5. And, and they'll be off to Oakland next week for a date with the Raiders. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.